name is Ryan Billig, and today I'll be talking about my Native American music final paper and how American popular music is always misrepresenting the Native American culture. So to give you a little bit of an outline, um, I'll be listing some of the examples of uh, how American popular music um, depicts and misrepresents the Native American culture. Um, some of these specific examples will be such as playing Indian and um, specific songs and how they are examples of singing lickface. So throughout the course we've been learning about how Native American uh, culture is misrepresented and its various ways that it can be misrepresented whether that be through movies, through music, or through plays. So let's dive into the first portion. The portion of my paper that I would like to discuss is about blackface minstrelsy. This was a form of racism that um, African Americans endured and had to deal with during the 1830s and most of the 1840s. Um, this was constructed from live uh, variety acts, comedic skits, dances, musical numbers, and developed um, racial archetypes by displaying blackness. This is pretty much where white actors would get on stage um, with the sole intention to make fun of or kind of poke fun at the way that the African American slaves lived their life and um, at the time the, most of the African Americans didn't, or no, most of the whites didn't really know much about the African Americans because and their culture because most of the time they were working for them as slaves and they were doing as they were told. Um, this form our blackface minstrelsy can also be seen as a form of uh, singing red face. Singing red face, according to the textbook, is when a non-native person takes on the racial archetype of a Native American character through through song. Um, singing red face is still popular, very popular in today's society, no matter how hard these Native American people try to stop this uh, form of racism. Um, when people are singing red face, they're often dressed up on how a a typical Native American would dress um, if they mean or not to be, or if they mean to or not to uh, make fun of their language, they most likely are. They're also making fun of their culture and music, uh, whether it's directly or indirectly. Um, many schools around this time, around the Thanksgiving time, will do a pilgrim and Indian themed play. And although these, these children have no idea what they're doing um, and don't fully understand um, how this may be inappropriate on their part, uh, this is a prime example of singing red face. Um, the children are still performing these dances and dressing as how they think Native Americans um, would dress um, when in fact they're indirectly making fun of their music and culture by not accurately representing um, what they stand for. And this can be extremely offensive to Native Americans because um, it's depicting them in a, uh, a manner that they don't want um, and it doesn't fully show the culture and they don't know and understand the background of what they're doing and why they're doing it. As I just mentioned, um, a lot of these school children are pretending to dress up as Native Americans um, and when these children are pretending to be Native Americans that can be referred to as playing Indian. Um, playing Indian can be defined as a performance of American Indian identities by non-Indians. Um, playing Indian is not only something that's performed by various school plays, but it's also by children playing outside. Um, I remember I did it myself growing up. Um, half the team would be cowboys, the other half would be Indians. And so they would, the cowboys would have guns and horses and the Indians would have bow and arrows. Um, so as mentioned in the textbook, uh, during school on the playground, children mock, kill each other as cowboys and Indians. Uh, with a goal for the cowboys is to mock, kill the Indians. And at the time, these children, they really don't understand why this could be offensive um, to the Native American people. But um, the Native American people do, in fact, take offense to that due to their lack of knowledge and the fact that they are, the whole goal of the game is to essentially kill off the Native American people. Um, this is due to the fact that um, these kids have grown up or American society depicts the Native American people as bad people, um, as savages, as it mentions later in the book. Um, for trying to maintain their land when they believe that it should belong to the um, true American. Not only is this found in schools, this is also found um, on Halloween. These people can be sexy Amer or sexy Indians, my bad. Um, and it really just throws out the entire culture aspect of it as people are 
trying to make themselves look attractive and throwing out half of the outfit, more than half, probably 75% of the outfit, just to make themselves um, look better for Halloween. Um, and a professor from Harvard, who's the author of the book called Playing Indian, discusses how Native Americans are also were hypersexualized and depicted as cannibals. Um, this is just outrageous uh, because it is it is true that most of the time growing up, like as I could say for myself, the, the image that a young American um, has of Native Americans is majority negative, which we'll get into later in the video. Um, but as the tech book mentioned, that it's becoming so popular, playing Indian can practically be considered an inaugural part of American culture. So for many Americans, they have really only known one form or one a uh, couple facts about the Native American culture, and this is the facts that are um, taught to them at a young age. So, according to the textbook, the misrepresentation may be the only form that Native American represent, or the only form of Native American representation that they have ever known. Um, this can be also known as cultural confusion. I thought a good example of this was uh, Tim McGraw, his song, um, "The Indian Outlaw." which um, the song has become extremely popular and almost created its own genre of country music called Outlaw Country. And even though the lyrics were extremely offensive and Native Americans spoke out about his song, um, radio stations continued to play the song due to the popularity of it. Um, I thought it was also interesting that his record label and producer told him specifically not to make the song because it was so offensive, but he went ahead and did it anyways because he knew the song would be such a hit. And this song can also be seen as a form of red face, cultural red face, because of the use of theoretical content in of using the declarative statement that he is an Indian in order to magically make it so, the duration of the song. Um, I th just thought it was mind-blowing that he was warned by so many people and um, even people that spoke out and he continued to leave the song out there for everybody to listen to and... Um, it raised to the top of the charts, but that's not the same for every artist. And although um, a good example of this is The Pale-Faced Indian by Marvin Rainwater. His intentions were extremely pure and to bring awareness to the situation, um, but to somebody that uh, who wasn't native, um, it was most likely sound comical to those listeners. So as mentioned before, children in the American public like to play um, cowboys and Indians, um, and this can develop a negative look towards the Native Americans. This negative negative look on Native Americans and their culture can be referred to as racial antipathy. The negative stereotypes of Native Americans um, were used in singing Red Face as well. An example of this would be the term um, savage, which was a term that referred to Native Americans in the Old West in which, according to the textbook, Native Americans stood in the way of the land and resources that should have been available for true Americans. And it made the American or Native American people look bad, which uh, resulted in negative feelings towards them and towards the or uh, gave the American public that negative feeling. And more often than not, um, people will have the illusion that um, the person who is speaking for a specific group is speaking for the group as a whole, like their represented leader. Um, is speaking for every single person in that tribe, um, but this is often not the case. And according to the textbook, both playing and singing red face attempt often succeed at being false ambassadors for the entire group of which people with rich and value or varied cultures and personalities. So I just thought that was a key proponent from that section of reading, uh, just because no matter what, say one person may look like they represent the entire. Um, community or group as a whole, um, that's always not true. So some of my final thoughts for the paper is that um, this class and this research paper as a whole has really opened my eyes as to how the American public um, wrongfully treats these Native American music, or Native Americans and their culture as well as their music. Um, I mean, after doing the research to figure out that it has started at such a young age, um, I think that kind of falls on the American school systems to do a better job at teaching an accurate version of Native American history to make sure that um, these children really understand why it's not okay to play, um, be playing Indian, and um, just kind of get rid of those various stereotypes and culture 
campus appropriation. Um, I also just want to say I've thoroughly enjoyed your classes. It has taught me um, many things that I did not think I would ever learn in my entire life, um, as well as opened my eyes um, just to see how the American public as a whole is just so one-sided to so many different things. And without the proper research, they really don't understand what they're talking about and how it could be offensive to others.